And this is my presentation on how pirate radio changed the radio industry. We're going to be looking at the BBC from the, from the beginning, so in 1922, and the rules and regulations at the time. And then we're going to be following through to the 60s, when pirate radio came in and created a competition for the BBC. And then we'll be looking in particular at Radio Caroline, which is one of the most popular pirate radio ships. And we'll be looking at how radio, pirate radio in general, changed the industry. Firstly, we're going to look at the BBC. The BBC began in October 1922, when a number of manufacturers came together to promote and develop the idea of this broadcasting company. And then in 1927, it received a royal charter and the first ever daily radio show, um, 2LO it was called, was broadcast in London. At this time, um, radio was only broadcast for a few hours a day. So at, at the time, it couldn't have been anticipated the amount of change and development that the radio industry was going to see over the next few years. At the time of the beginning of the BBC, the first ever Director General, John Reith, was in power of the company at the time, and he was a very strong Christian and had very strict morals. So he really strongly portrayed these through the way he ran the company. And it was very clear in the um, way things were thought about. Here's a quote from him. Says broadcasting must be conducted in the future as it has been in the past as a public service with definite standards. This means that the BBC was a public service, which, which means that it is produced for the audience's benefit, so everything that's broadcast had to be of good influence to the audience. It wasn't to make profit um, through things such as advertising or promotion in its shows, it was just merely to entertain its audience. And it was funded through a government tax system, so um, they didn't need to make any profit because they were already funded. And it was regulated by the Office of Communications, or Ofcom. Um, John Reed's intentions at the time were for the BBC to inform, entertain and educate its audience, um, which was precisely why the broadcasting in the time was so sensible and didn't play things such as rock and roll music or um, have alcohol references or anything like that. At the time, the BBC didn't have much competition at all, um, other than really small amateur stations, which didn't really create any competition for them. But in the 60s, pirate radio came along. Um, pirate radio is um, unregulated or illegal broadcasting. So it's radio that is breaking the law, um, broadcasting um, features and shows that wouldn't have been agreed to by the British law at the time. But because it was broadcast on international waters, this meant it got away with it. And um, so it wasn't actually under any law. Um, like the British law couldn't control what was being broadcast in international waters because it wasn't actually on their land. Um, and it was often broadcast from ships or maritime structures, which you can see here is Radio Caroline. Um, here we've got Radio London, Radio Eric, and Radio Caroline, which are some of just an example of how many um, pirate radio stations there were and how much co um, competition they were creating at the time for the BBC. The reason that, that pirate radio in particular got so many listeners um, catching up with the BBC and causing so much competition and controversy was because they knew what their listeners wanted and they could see that there was a gap in the market that BBC wasn't catering for. So people that like teenagers that like to listen to rock and roll and drinking and partying and things like that, they appealed to this. Um, they had lots of celebrity appearances such as um, the Beach Boys, Tom Jones, um, the Walker Brothers, Gene Pitney, and a pop star at the time called Twinkle stayed overnight on Radio Caroline's ship as a publicity stunt because she knew how popular that
station was and how much attention she would get for it. They also had played a lot of popular music, um, such as just these ones here, this, these all showed on Radio Caroline, um, Cannon's Heat, Beach Boys again, Small Faces, The Animals and The Hollies, which were all um, pop stars that weren't so much broadcast on the BBC as they are on pirate radio. One of the most popular um, pirate radio stations was Radio Caroline, which was founded in 1964. Um, it broadcast to Scotland, Ireland, the Midlands, Wales and the North West, so it really had quite a wide range of people all over Britain listening to it. And we're now going to show a little video to just show the, um, which has a couple of images as well, to show the nature of pirate radio and in particular Radio Caroline. Today, Radio Caroline still broadcasts legally um, onshore rather than offshore, so it can, can still be heard. Um, and although some people love um, pirate radio stations um, and felt that it brought a creation of variation in the industry and offered a diversity that the BBC couldn't offer at the time, some people were outraged along with the government at the fact that it was breaking all these rules. But there is no denying that pirate radio changed the way in which radio is made forever and offers a great diversity. Um, for example, since the um, end of pirate radio, BBC realised from this and learned from it that there was a gap in the market that they needed to cater to and changed their own radio stations. Um, so they've got Radio 1, Radio 2 now, which all um, play pop music and are a lot more relaxed and um, very a lot more variation. Um, these are my references for the presentation. Thank you for watching. Does anyone have any questions? Um, what do you think of pirate radio? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I think I can understand why um, some people didn't agree with it because obviously the BBC was a lot better regulated um, and they knew that they could play it in front of their children and things like that and wouldn't have to worry about it. But at the same time, I think it was good that it came along and made a change in the radio industry so that 